Hi, this is John Solari of The Method Actor Speaks. And today we have a wonderful guest who I see all the time working over at SAG. I guess volunteer and doing a lot of work. Vanessa, tell us your last name and everything. My name is Vanessa Verdugo. Verdugo, that's a good Italian name. Oh, actually it's Spanish. It's Spanish? Um, yeah, my family founded um, the area in Glendale, like Verdugo City. And, really? They yeah. founded it? Yeah, well actually they own that land and um, so it was named after them and um, were related to the Picos, like Pico Rivera and Sepulveda and stuff. That's and the Griffiths, for Griffith Park. Well, come and join you. That, that's just, <laughs> you don't have to move. It's just, you know, and that's really great now. That's interesting. So, and how did that get you into show business? Well, actually it's something I've always wanted to do. I mean, from the time I was a little, little kid, I would imitate um, Barbara Eden on I Dream a Genie. <laughs> I'd reenact things using my mother as the master. Did you and show your belly button? I wanted to, <laughs> and I was upset that mine did not look like hers. <laughs> and my mom said, well, wait till you get older. <laughs> Oh, so that's interesting, Barbara, Barbara Eden. Yeah, yeah, and I saw her at SAG um, about a year ago. She came to visit for the um, conversation series. and it was, Is that what they call it? You can sit back a little bit so we can... And, hey, there we go. Um, now, yeah, it's called... Tell us, tell us a little bit about that. Um, the conversation series? Yes. Um, they just have working actors or professionals in the business who um, come and speak to the SAG members. And, and this is over at SAG after? Um, the SAG Foundation. The SAG Foundation, but yeah. I mean it's... it's uh... Yeah, for the union. Right. And, um, and I think even people who are eligible for the union. Can... Eligible? Uh-huh. Oh, so if you... Oh, you understand? Sometimes. I I, I, don't quote me on that. I'm if you don't have enough vouchers or something like that, you're allowed to get in? Or... Um, sometimes, and sometimes they allow members to bring guests. Guests, yeah. So, um, yeah. And there's a, quite a few of them there. Yeah, and some really great people, and um, it's totally free. I was there for the first time when I went to see Nebraska with, uh, oh. you know, and it was really interesting. And it's a very lovely room it's in. It's very, oh, you know, yeah, yeah. it's not like, you know, you feel very comfortable in that room. Uh -huh. and, I, so close to the stage that you could really listen and see everyone. Yeah, I believe Aaron Spelling left money in his will for it. Oh, really? It's, yeah, it's run by donations, totally. I didn't know that because mm -hmm. I'm a friend, I, you know, on Facebook, I Candy Spelling. Oh. I've been trying to get her to come on. That's an interesting, i got to ask her about that. Yeah. yeah. So what made you become a volunteer there? That's interesting. Why, why well, do you do actually, that? I haven't volunteered there for a while because um, I've just there, been busy. Right? Um, um, actually, yeah, I <laughs> it's, I used to volunteer all the time, and then I um, had to get a part-time job, and I just got busy. and And I think when we met is when we were marching. Oh, and, oh, um, oh, against the merch and all that, yeah. Yeah, and um, but. You know, it is what it is. So. It, well, listen, <laughs> yeah. Now we just got to try to make it work, I, whatever that means. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, 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 unfortunately, I didn't get in there, but I got in as a delegate. Uh -huh. So I will be going to the board meeting this week, uh, next week. Yeah, next congratulations. Monday. That's great. Well, you know, I would have liked to get on the board where you got a little more. You could, now I can only listen. Right. You know? Yeah. And I can, and it's, it's a little difficult. Yeah. But anyway, you know, I, actually some of the people there that are in power now that I was against, I, I somehow I get a feeling they want to do the right thing. Right. I, right. Everybody has. Um, Not everybody. Well, but I mean, this. A lot of the people have yeah. the best intentions for the union. And that the, I the could, I believe. So I, I wanted to work with that. In right. A sense, right. That's great. Like yeah. That. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, be getting back to you, because this is interesting. You have a great quality about you. You have a little bit of presence. Oh, thank when you. When people see you. <laughs> I remember the first time I saw her, I, I, whoa, look at that. Who is she? Oh, you thank know. you. No, you do. You, you, when you walked in, I thought, wow, this girl's got it together. But why did you, you know, you, you became an actor, you said, when you were a child. Well, actually, 
And then when I was on my 12th birthday, my cousin and I snuck into a showing of Scarface <clears throat> with Al Pacino. And I don't know how I got in, I mean, I, how I snuck in, but... Um, and after seeing that movie, I remember, it just opened my eyes to a whole new world that, you know, the whole um, Mario Lito, the Cuban, oh, I don't know. Um, well, the Cuban boat wave. Well, um, actually, just the fact that I could learn about this other group of people yeah. and this other way of life and um, just, it amazed me. Really? And I knew that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be able to portray a character or write that brought other worlds to people and allowed people to learn about other other ways of life that they normally wouldn't have come across. So you, you enjoy writing too? Yes, yes. Do you have anything published or in the well, well, screenplays and plays, what do you like to write? Uh, yeah, on, on YouTube and on Vimeo right now I have um, a short film, well, it's like 18 minutes long, um, called Lest You Forget, I'm Barbara Lamar. Yeah, I saw that, I was watching it, it was interesting. And, and you know, you, one minute you put you had white on, then you cut the, well, you had the black on. Make. Because initially it was supposed to be in black and white. And um, so the, the method of filming was supposed to look like an old oh. type film. And, for some reason, it didn't transfer over well with the film that was used, so they kept it in color. And um, Barbara died of TB brought on by drug use. And um, but I had it written with a little poetic license <laughs> that she had dementia brought on by the TB as a side effect. And um, so when she was dressed up, she was imagining herself in her heyday. And then when she was in her nightgown, it was really her and the sick, sickly Barbara who had TB. And um, I, I don't know if you can tell, but my makeup's a little heavier and darker when I'm in, in the well, You don't uh, have nightgown. nothing on now. It looks, you know, it's, oh, thank you. Right? Oh, I, mean, I have something. <laughs> really? I mean, <laughs> yeah, so. It doesn't look like it. Oh, thank you. It doesn't look like me. So <laughs> I didn't do it. So I, so I don't look like a ghost. No. Yeah, yeah, so I have some color yeah. on camera. And, um, so you're not a sun person? I used to be, and now I'm not. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I, when I was a teenager, you know, I used to lay out with the baby oil and all that, and now we hear about the sun damage well, and yeah. everything. So. When I was growing up, I'm Italian, we used to use uh, olive oil and vinegar. Really? Oh and, my and gosh. The, the vinegar would take the, the burn out. Oh, would it? Yeah. Just regular until this day, yeah, regular plain vinegar. Huh. You know, it, it, until this day, if you used to go to the beach, you use know, olive oil. I mean, it tastes like a salad. People, <laughs> you know, you look like you smell like a salad, so people are looking to eat you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's, <what> you say. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. I've never heard of that. But yeah, the vinegar takes the burn out. Oh, wow. Huh. Yeah, if you ever get sunburn, you just put some vinegar just on it. Just regular there. vinegar. That's what it oh, takes okay. you right out. Now, yeah, but that's interesting, because I do, I like, come from New York when I got out here, the sun, you know, you just like walking in the sun, and it's, yeah. and, but it is true. You just, everything you do today is dangerous. Exactly, exactly, yeah. You know, and and so there comes a point where it's just like... You say, you know, give me a break, let me get out of my We all got to die sometime. Right. <laughs> you yeah. know, it's just... It's really... <laughs> it gets ridiculous, yeah. But it, now, what made you do this film? That's interesting. And how did it go about? Well, actually, this sounds really hokey, but when I was a little girl, I used to dream about her. Really? And I didn't know who she was, but it wasn't until years later where I was looking at um, Hollywood Babylon, one of the versions of Hollywood Babylon, and I saw her in it. And that's the woman in my dreams. And since then, I've always had an interest in her. Really? And for about close to 20 years, I've... But tell the audience who she was. Barbara Lamar was a silent screen actress, and she really was a pioneer for women in the business, because she, she started out as a writer. 
and the studios hired her and um, for that reason but um, um, Mary Pickford right. and Douglas Fairbanks saw her and thought she was so beautiful that she should be in front of the camera instead of behind it and so that's how her career pretty much began and um, but unfortunately, she got caught up in a lot of the drugs, and well, she broke her ankle, and at the time, they didn't know, you know, that it wasn't good to prescribe heroin to somebody. Really, you know, or painkiller. So yeah, that's how she got hooked, wow. and um, and that. But she also partied, and um, but the, again, they didn't know the um, ramifications. Consequences. Yeah, that, exactly. That, yeah, it was like you know, same thing with coke. Yeah. The cocaine was oh yeah, she, she was. Uh, she did coke a lot, and. Um, but then again, too, back in the the eighties, everybody knew coke was bad, but they it was rampant out here, and, right? You know, throughout the world. Yeah. I remember New York, everybody was was doing coke. Yeah. No matter where you went. Yeah. But that I never. It just made me. Uh, I tried it once, and it made me wake up. <laughs> I was looking to, you know, get high, and I was drinking, and uh, I wasn't looking to get sober. Right, right. So, you know, that's what made me do, feel sober. Uh-huh. So uh -huh. this for. Oh, how funny. <laughs> that's funny. But it did kill a lot of actors. Yeah. That, because uh, they kept them drinking. You know, it sobered them up, and it right. just... Anyway, that's a, a thing. So, but when you did this, and you re research and doing the character... Have, your training, what kind of training did, have you had? Um, actually, I've trained under um, um, the Actors Studio actors. Well, for, I trained with Stella Adler uh, uh, for a while and, um, and some her of her protégés. Um, I took a couple classes, but when I was there, she was pretty much retired. So, yeah, yeah, it was yeah. toward the end of her life. And I studied with um, a Milton Justice. And I've also studied with Steve Railsback. Steve Railsback, yeah. yeah. He's a member of the studio. Mm -hmm. I did, well, actually, my first movie was with him. Oh, really? Well, it was, was called that? Armed and Dangerous with John Candy. It was a comedy, and oh. he, he drives the trailer truck. Oh. Uh, and he was driving, and he's calling, he, he's calling John Candy Slim. He didn't Slim. <laughs> <laughs> that was, yeah, 1986, oh, I think that was. Yes, mm -hmm. good, I hear he's very good at teaching. Well, he's a member of the studio. Mm -hmm. He's yeah. been around, he's done a lot of good work. Uh -huh. So you've done a little, so you're really into the, the actor's studio. Yeah. And all that I, method acting and. I attended Cal State Fullerton for a while, but I wasn't real happy with the program there. It, it just seemed like, well, at that time, um, it might be different now, but it just seemed like there was more to it. You know, that it was just kind of, it was like surface acting. You mean at the college? Yeah. Yeah, well, it, I, I find, yeah, that, well, it's it's a lot of teachers who learn out of a book. Yeah, that's what it felt like. Yeah. And um, so I left, and that's when I, um, actually Benicio Del Toro um, referred me to the Stella Adler Conservatory in Hollywood. At that time, upstairs there on. Um, well, actually, at this time, it was um, over on Argyle. Oh, it was on Argyle, yeah. And and then there was a fire, and then that's when they moved to their new yeah, location. Yeah. And it's funny because her star is right downstairs. Yeah, you know, yeah, there, right there. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah, I know he was a big fan of. She really encouraged him in yeah. his acting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got read about that. Stella Adler, yeah, I have a lot of respect for Stella. Well, all of them that came. From the group theater there, right, and uh, right. yeah, yeah, they all had, you know, such a history. It, it all, when you think about it, it all comes back to the same thing. If it you does. believe it, I really believe does. it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, exactly. Yeah. Really. Yeah. You know, some people say, "Well, Meisner this or Stella that," but they all had the same idea, just different way of getting to the yeah, truth. Yeah. Different ways of getting there, but yeah, yeah. and it's it, whatever works for you. Right. Mm -hmm. And what people don't understand is a lot of times, all that training is for is for when you're stuck. Right. You know? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. really when you, 
So you, if you have to go somewhere, you have a, a, a technique of how to get there. Right, right. When exactly. you're stuck, instead yeah. you can't get there. Uh huh. And that's really because I've learned the more actors do learn. I mean, the more actors learn, the less they do. Yeah. Because they're thinking all the time. Instead right. Of, right. Instead of just being, doing it. You know, yeah. So, well, I got to do this, and I got. And if you're doing that, it's like... Yeah, a, what's my motivation? Yeah, what's, what's my the, motivation? Objective, and, subjective. Yeah, I mean, that's all uh, bullshit. Yeah. Folks. <laughs> yeah, it complicates it. It, it really, really does. It really does. It does. And it shows. I, I, I see it at the studio sometimes when people are doing scenes, you know, and they'll let you know that they're, you know, they're screaming and this and that right. before they have exactly. to go. But they're telling me that, listen, this is what I'm doing. Right. And once you start doing that, then I know you're directing yourself. Yeah, exactly. And, exactly. And that's the way it comes across. And then usually the first thing out of their mouth is, well, I wasn't feeling this. They're making excuses uh -huh. bef you know, before the critique comes. Right, right, exactly. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, they, you know, they're trying to cover their asses instead of, I'm there to what I didn't do right. You know, I, I, my... My idol and best teacher at it is Salome Jens, and I, I did a, I says, in New York they used to videotape all the scenes. Right. And I would send them back to Salome, and uh, I remember her critique was to me, John, you were nervous. And I'm looking at it, and I wasn't nervous, Salome, and I can't believe that. How could she say that? And then I had to stop and think, you know what, Salome knows more than I do. She's seen a little bit more. Yeah. She's looking at me. Maybe she's right. Yeah. And you accept it. And she, you know, and I, okay. And you, you, you learn to accept that. But a lot of people don't want to hear the criticism of this and that. They only want to hear how good they are. Right. Right. Exactly. And that gets you nowhere. You still need a dollar fifty to get on the bus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> It's true. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Are you still study studying? Um, yeah, right now I'm um, I take various workshops. Well, I make workshops in the sense of like a cold reading class. And um, Now, where do you do that at? That's um, into I do it at TCD Studios. Oh, and that's in Hollywood. And um, actually, they're the ones who filmed my Barbara Lamar piece. Oh, really? And um, yeah, it's a membership, and oh. they're totally against doing casting director workshops. Well, that's a lot of them are uh, illegal in a sense. Uh, yeah. Especially if you have to pay them, because a lot of people don't realize if you have to pay if you get you pay a casting director, but you know the the law is I mean they can't hire you. Right. Right. You know that's. Yeah. I know. So you're paying somebody to deny uh, you work. Hire you. <laughs> right. right, exactly. That's it's, really what it is. Yeah. Because they can get in trouble if they hire you. They can, you know, it's a violation of mm -hmm. something. I would, and I just found out about that myself. I, I didn't realize that. Yeah. It, it's just amazing how. <clears throat> but work, let's get back. I want to talk a little bit about you. Look, listen to me. I'm stumbling here. <laughs> and uh, when you. What have you learned by working at the Screen Actors Guild after, as a volunteer? What is it? How is that? Is that helped you? Yeah, it has. You know, especially with the whole merger thing, um, meeting people who were on the opposite side of what we believed in. Um, like you had mentioned, I learned that most of them really do have the members and the union's best interest at heart. Yeah. You know, and before that, you know, I was, by taking some people's word for it, you know, I saw them as being, you know, the devil, you know, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and, um, right. and that, you know, they were horrible, and after was a horrible union, and it, and it wasn't true, you know, when I, when I um, started talking with them more, and um, attending events where they were, you know, screenings and that sort of thing. And um, I was pleasantly surprised. I was too, because, it, you know, I would, there's three sides to every story. There's yours, right. mine, and then there's the truth. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. and that's what I'm finding out. 
you know, I mean, there's some, I, there is, you know, I'm an, I, I, I don't know if you were there today at the board meeting when I got up and I just, and I spoke and I told him, you know, I'm an Italian from New York, I did 16 years, and uh, I know a little bit about unions. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know? No, I wasn't there. Yeah. At, at, at the first board meeting they had. And it's true, I do. I, you know, I know the corruption right. that goes on. I know all yeah. the, the things, and uh, I've been there. So it, it's not a question that they're going to pull anything over my eyes. Uh -huh. That's why one of the reasons why I joined. I wanted to run, you know, because I do understand corruption. Right. I do understand bullshit. And sure. uh, and and the, the people that I've been talking to there, and I, I was very. What's her name? The one that became the, oh God, what is her name? She became the, at the convention, she was voted in as the, the board, head of the board. Uh, she was, oh, the little blonde, like blonde hair. Oh, Gabrielle. Right, Harris. right. You know, she kept her word. She reached out and, and made someone for membership first on the board. Oh, and which that's I, great. You know, yeah, so, um, yeah, I, I've been pleasantly surprised. Yeah. So, are you doing any plays or anything like that? Well, how can we? Actually, I want to. Um, in t 2010, I did a solo show on Abigail Folger, who was a victim of the Manson family, right. who was murdered with Sharon Tate. And a lot, a lot of people don't know other people died with Sharon Tate and. Um, the more I looked into her and did research on her, I realized she really was an interesting person. Yeah. And because I just coffee, that's who exactly, we're about. yeah. And um, yet she didn't adhere to the ritzy lifestyle, and um, she did a lot of volunteer work in Pacoima. This was a play, farm. right? Yeah. Now, I, some who directed that? Um, my friend Elizabeth Rolnick directed it. And I'm hoping to bring it back. I just finished the um, the screenplay version. Somebody asked me to play her father. Really? This was well, years ago. I'm wondering, was there a role in there of her father? Was he involved in it? Um, he he supposedly hired people, or was no? I mean, in the play, it. was there a character? No, um, oh, it was okay. a solo show. Oh, oh, for so, for oh, my, oh, oh, oh. my show. But there was a play, and, and really? when you said that, yeah, uh -huh. someone had asked me to play oh, wow. her father. Wow. And I agree, but that, I don't know what ever happened to it. It never materialized. Uh -huh. So when you send that, some of that would be interesting. And um, I, ju I just think it's a very important thing because um, I used to work with some people who were in their mid 20s and younger. And they have no idea about the case, and they don't yeah, they don't know true. about Manson or any of these people, and they they just see him as somebody on a T-shirt. That's really true, and uh, I hear he's getting married again, married and, again for the first exact, time. Exactly. Yeah. Again. And um, in the process, I've become good friends with Deborah Tate, Sharon Tate's sister, oh. and um, I mean she's just such a an inspiration, John, and the things she goes through every single day in dealing with these people and having to go to parole hearings constantly and um, having to deal with um, different politicians to make sure they stay in prison and that and it she says it feels like it was yesterday that it well, happened. Yeah. And I don't think people realize the impact it still has. These crime. I mean, the man has more followers today than ever before um, amongst the young people. Oh yeah, well that's the media, and and we live in a world today where violence and macabre or whatever you want right. to call it is really glamorized. Yeah, I mean, exactly. All I think about is the text and them got having babies and marriage and exactly and prison and uh, you know it's just and they're millionaires and they you're right they made. Tons of money before mm -hmm. some saw a Sam law. Uh -huh. Or even thing. now. Even now, they they, they get around it. There's ways around it, and uh, other people open bank accounts for them. And that's how they. Yeah, so. it's just amazing. Not that they, 
I mean, uh, they do get commissary and they, they're taken care of and, you know, there's a lot of corruption in the joint too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess, you know, Manson for a while had a whole floor working for him yeah. and signing autographs for him. That's right. Yeah. And, uh, and people are making money off him. Exactly. He keeps the 20 bucks, but in return, the people who sign the autographs for him get to keep the letter. Right. And so what these people don't know is some other hardcore felon has their name and address. <laughs> and, I, and, yeah. they, and they sell it for, you know, it's, it's, it's a whole new a whole show. Right. You know, I understand a lot of that. And it, it's, you know, if you could earn money for someone, they don't care what you do. Exactly. And that's exactly. the world we live in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's all about the money. It's all about the money, and people don't understand that. I mean... Look at the reality shows out yeah. there. <laughs> but it's interesting that you should pick, you know, the two people you picked, you know, one was a silent, you know, back in the, the silent days, you know, and now Folgy. Why, why are I? Keep talking. I just want to make sure I want to get close-ups of you at times. Good. Um, because she's been so overlooked. Why do you think she was overlooked? Um, well, basically, I think because Sharon Tate was the movie star and she was pregnant. Um, and Abigail was one of those people that did everything right mm -hmm. and by the book. Um, but she also did partake in some drug use. And Well, everybody did back then. Everybody, yeah. I mean, it wasn't a... And she made some mistakes. And I think what attracted me with the two of them, with Barbara Lamar and Abigail Folger, besides there not really having been much done on them, um, was the fact that they were young, they made mistakes, and to me what's so tragic is that they're defined by their mistakes. Uh -huh. You know, they're defined as uh, with the infamy of their um, deaths. Yeah. And, um, I mean, I, w I think it's terrible that Abigail's known because of Manson. I mean, you can't hear her name without hearing his name. And she had so much more to her. You know, she was, a, she graduated from Harvard and, um, she was going to be going back to college. I, I talked to her doctor, um, who she saw that day, um, her psychiatrist, Dr. Flicker. And um, she was going to be going back to law school. Um, she wanted to be the first woman senator in California. Really? Yeah. And, um, and she was murdered that night. And the next morning was she was supposed to fly back into San Francisco to see her mother to celebrate her 26th birthday. How old was she? when? 25. She was going to be 25. 26. Oh. Yeah. God, when you think about it, they try to, I mean, such... Yeah, you I know. mean, you talk about being in the wrong place at the wrong time. And um, and it, it's been interesting to learn about a lot of these people um, because they were just so normal, you know. And, I mean, Jay Sebring, he gave Jim Morrison his look, you yeah. know, um, the hairstylist. And nobody knows about Jay Sebring now. And... Um, all of these people had so much to them, and they had, um, in my show I talk about Abigail and her dreams. I have her speaking, coming back from beyond and speaking to the California Parole Board, you know, at um, her killer's parole hearing. Uh -huh. They decided not to show up. But she talks about, you know, her dreams and what she had and um, her life with her mother, who she, Inez, who she was very close to, and her brother Peter. And um, I went to um, Inez's memorial service. She was 100 years old. And her son, or Abigail's brother, Peter, was there talking about Abigail. And he could not say her name without breaking down crying. Wow. And, yeah, I mean, the crimes are just so fresh to the people who lost people to them and um, I just think it's a real shame that um, the victims get lost. Always get lost Vanessa. Yeah. We're going to come back with part two in a minute here.